morning at six o'clock. Does anybody want to do the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. I say we do. Sure, I'm, I'm with you. Up, I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of the United States, of America, States of America and to the Republic to for the which, Republic it stands, which it stands, one, one nation, nation one under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice just for all. For all. Thank you, Ted. You're welcome. So we have the consent agenda items, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm working off two small screens, but the approval of the regular minutes of April 6, 2020. Do we have a motion to approve? Oh, there so we go. move. So Second. move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, no, so the uh, minutes are approved. So action items. Hold on, Ted. I just realized I hadn't had it recording. Could we do the motion and everything again just so we have it? Absolutely. I move that we accept uh, uh, accept the regular meeting minutes of April 6, 2020. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve. So we'll go to the action items. Um, all right, I am so sorry. I can read these, Ted, because I have it in front of me if you want. If you uh -huh. would like, that'd be wonderful. All right. Sure. Well, I've got them here. Okay. Um, I move that we accept the general fund vouchers for $9,880.24 and the payroll vouchers for $14,515.25 and the water fund vouchers for $67.38. Second. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? Uh, yeah, because I worded it to where I I made a motion to approve and then I read everything. Well, I will and second. Scott just seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, commissioner's report? Uh, I don't really have a whole lot. I can say that I met with Bonnie and Toby a week before last and uh, just to touch base about how we're proceeding uh, making sure that everybody was on board with what the progress is and I think so far they are waiting for Nickel Brothers to come and lower it back down they've replaced all of the floor and uh, when they put the whole thing back down then they'll finish doing the interior walls and uh, I've been trying to give them some pizza at least once a week and they're doing really a great job. They've had a good time doing it and it's it's progressing really well. It's been great. So that's kind of about it for me. Uh, hey Judy, how many how many is on that crew? Well, it kind of depends. The minimum has been about three. Okay. Um, when, the Nick, when the Nickel brothers were there, but that was when they first started, there was probably about 10, I guess, maybe at the most. But that yeah, was when they, they first started. They've done an amazing job. So I, I you're giving pizza. I'll, I'll make sure I drop some food by there also. They've just been doing an amazing job. So Yeah, I don't think they're there this coming week because they're waiting for Nickel Brothers. Nickel Brothers is supposed to come and lower it back down, I think, the 16th or 18th. I can't remember. <coughs> okay. Well, I just had the uh, the court Zoom meeting and I had the EDC Zoom meeting and then uh, sheltering in place for COVID-19 from my uh, office. Well, I've just had uh, the general meeting and then a meeting regarding the placement of the uh, pillars with Larry. But Scott, I'll tell you that the EDC has been doing a tremendous job uh, for a lot of our small businesses and nonprofits. Uh, they've been doing a really good job. 
So yeah, the staff's really stepped up and and done a lot, a lot yeah. of good for the community and the small business. Yeah, they have. They really have been. So security officers report. Larry, are you going to take um, over? Travis? Yeah, I can read that. Uh, hold on a second. I got to get to it. Um, right, I, I'll swear next next month we need to do this in golf carts or because this video <laughs> stuff doesn't work for me. Okay, upon arrival, Mason County Sheriff had a vehicle pulled over at the waterfront. After waiting for the officer to finish up with the occupants, I asked the officer what the issue was. He then replied that the driver needed to wait a while before driving. I then proceeded to tell the officer I would also talk to the vehicle occupants and remind them to respect the park during their stay. Being that Mason County Sheriff was giving them a pass, I hardly felt I could really push them to do more than they had already decided was a non-issue. With the fact we're still waiting for the Sheriff Department to sign off on any type of criminalization of our marina use rules, rocking this boat would seem counterproductive. I do have reservations with this policy due to the fact it was obviously they were giving a pass on it. They were giving a pass to a criminal offense on Port of Allen property. What good are the laws set forth if they're not uniformly enforced? This is a perfect opportunity for the Mason County Sheriff to have curated revenue through finding said individual with Port of Allen's marine rules if they were criminalized. Because it was obvious after talking to the person in question, there was some under the influence issues that should have been addressed. These individuals were peaceful and respectful people, all three I know personally. Brendan and his wife, Brenna, and their longtime friend, Corey, that the port would never have any issue with, but which, but all of which is beside the point. I guess I expected more from local law enforcement. There must be a better way that need to wait, then wait for a while before driving to cause repercussions for lawless behavior. So. Uh. Commissioner Scott or Commissioner Cooper, do you have any opinions on what I, I have something I need to say? Please do. I'm very disappointed in our deputies and not taking action. Um, when you have an intoxicated person on either it's it, it's public property, they need to take action. This is the first I heard about this, but it's it's been consistent throughout the county during the last month and that intoxicated people have been let go uh, just because they don't want to book them into the county jail. And I believe that we need to step up and say, this is not acceptable. So um, I understand people are going through their troubles and tribulations, but when it comes to driving intoxicated and coming into our port property, I expect some action to be taken. If it was one of my fish and wildlife officers or one of my um, city officers, we don't let those folks go. You just don't. So the liability after you touch them and leave them is too high. So I'd like to get a little bit more out of Travis. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a public meeting. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to get a little bit more out of Travis and. Uh, talk to the uh, sheriff's department about this. So, yeah, Travis, be great. Yeah, he's pretty upset. I, I can imagine I would be very upset if I was in his shoes, also. Ted, I trust you to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, Vouchers are done. Executive director's report. All right. Financial issues. Last month, they had concern about us being able to completely meet our obligations until we received our property tax collections, but it appears we're going to be okay. We received a partial payment on May 1st. Primarily, everyone whose mortgage company paid their taxes for them and will continue to receive what does come in monthly as usual. Since the majority of our tax payments come from Lakeland, while I expect things will be very tight, 
We hopefully won't need to tap our reserves at any point before the next tax collection in October. And we'll get through the year without taking any drastic measures. What really hurt us was the fact our audit cost was significantly higher, 8,800 than we anticipated and or budgeted for. And the treasurer unexpectedly and with no prior notice withdrew $7,500 directly from our account for election costs, even though we only had one unopposed commission seat up for election. Also, we've not yet received the expected reimbursements from RCO due to the computer crash with Prism. Of course, our billing was in the group of things that got wiped out when that happened. Uh, took me some time to connect with Kim Sellers, but we finally talked on Thursday and she went through the entire Prism billing system together with me. We successfully resubmitted it. She said she'll contact the powers that be and get this process as quickly as possible. She also told me that with the COVID-19 situation, everybody's working from home and it's slowing things down. However, she also told me they're relaxing the guidelines on some things and there's a possibility we could have our 25% match for Ogrins reduced. So I think that's a good, good thing. I have to write a request and detail why it should be, which I did today. Meanwhile, we have zero revenue coming in. No more your launch fees, no gazebo rentals, which we usually see a spike in right about now every year. Also, we've had to refund both deposits and advance payments for gazebo rentals for events that have been canceled. The opening of shrimp season are the single most productive days at our boat ramps and marinas. But unless a decision is made at the state level to change the opening of the season, we may be out of luck this year. Meanwhile, I read a post on Facebook from the Washington Policy Center saying Governor Inslee has released some federal stimulus money to help local governments. I was hoping there's a possibility of recouping some of the money we've lost from the gazebo rentals and launch fees. So I called the governor's office to find out if the port's eligible for any of this. I got a 10 minute voicemail that gives a lot of phone numbers and websites to go to for different things, but none that apply to this. Also, there's no way to leave a voicemail or ask a question or have someone call you back. So I called the press office to, uh, who refused to give me any information other than telling me to call the main number for the governor's office. The person I spoke with made it real plain I was wasting her time. So I called Dan Griffey to see if he can help, waiting to hear back from him. I did speak with our lobbyists and they sent me some information. So if we are eligible for anything, it doesn't look like it's going to be a significant amount. However, in spite of all this, there's some light at the end of the tunnel and it isn't the oncoming train. We've issued a total of 27 water availability letters, which are required for building permits to be issued and only collected on 10 of those. So that is an unbudgeted additional $80,000 we expect to receive sometime this year. By the way, we made the last payment on the water system on Friday, and we now own it free and clear. Hey. Also on the positive side, we had received an award letter for the $10,000 Department of Commerce grant we applied for in the supplemental budget. This is to use for preparing the parking lot for the development of the Oyster House platform. The lobbyists were instrumental in getting us that grant. So in total, between 2019, when we first hired them, and so far this year, they've gotten us $228,000 directly. And they were helpful in the North Bay Historical Society getting their grant nailed down as well. So I think for $25,000 that we've invested in them, our, our ROI is pretty good. Endurance. I asked them if we're covered for the loss of income from our facilities due to COVID-19. We received a response from their reinsurer, Alliance, that basically takes 12 pages to say no. Put a copy of their response in your meeting packet. I've also asked Clear Risk Solutions for a quote. Clear Risk is Endurance's largest competitor and covers a number of other ports, cities, and counties. I sent Enduras a required opt-out letter so we're not bound to them for automatic renewal. If ClearRisk doesn't submit an acceptable bid, we have the option of, according to our agreement with Enduras, to rescind the letter and renew. Electrical issue. We believe we've tracked down the problem and it will require some additional ground fault circuit interrupter equipment to be added that wasn't part of the original engineering. 
I asked both Seth from Georgia's Electric, the electrical contractor, and Ken Wild and Aviton, the vendor for the pedestal, how this problem could have come about in the first place and was told by both in separate discussion that while all the engineering of National Electric Code is compliant and work was done according to the engineer's plans and code, in practicality, ground fault circuit interrupting equipment could have been factored into the original plans and wasn't because of cost. I talked to the engineer and he said what he did was value engineered this. In other words, did it the cheapest way. The main breaker is the primary ground fault interrupter rather than using individual ground fault circuits for each pedestal. So I've asked Ken to connect with Seth and figure out how to solve the problem. They told me last week there isn't enough circuit breaker room in the existing panel to accommodate adding ground fault equipment that it will take to solve the main breaker tripping problem. A new panel will be needed to replace the one on the dock. Well, we could change the trip settings on the existing breakers. That would be marginal in terms of code compliance and or safety. So at this point, I asked George's electric for a bid on replacing the panel and installing the needed ground fault equipment. Since I haven't closed out the grant for this yet, I also asked both Ken and Seth to write me letters explaining the problem and the resolution so I could submit it to our grant manager and get the added costs covered in the grant. I told both I'd like to get this work done in time to open the marina for business whenever the governor lifts the stay at home order. Another electrical issue. A neighbor on the North Shore is once again complaining about light pollution. That's from the lights on the boat launch. And he complained about it a couple of years ago when he had his motorhome parked there. We worked with the PUD to try and accommodate his concerns and that seemed to solve the problem. But now he's building a house and isn't happy with what worked before. He contacted the PUD directly without contacting us and met with someone out there. He proposed installing some motion sensor lights on his property and turning off the light above the pay station, which is located at the head of the ramp. I met with the representative from the PUD and our neighbor, and we came to an agreement that the PUD will set a new pole on the other side of the ramp and a new light and direct the light towards the ramp. Our neighbor will install the motion sensors anyway, but we'll have the ramp lit, which was our main concern. Afterward, I met with the PUD rep and told them we're interested in some lighting for the parking lot across the street. We're going to set a pole there as well with two lights aimed towards the back of the lot. Public Wi-Fi. The PUD also contacted me and asked if they could locate a public Wi-Fi hotspot on their property. <coughs> Excuse me. Part of a countywide effort they've undertaken to expand broadband access, which as you know, is a WPPA priority. I approved doing it and sent us a contract. There's no cost to us for the equipment or to maintain it. Reopening our facilities. We need to discuss a potential plan for reopening our facilities so we can start to get some revenue flowing once again. Several other ports are beginning to do this under social distancing and other guidelines. This is on the agenda for discussion tonight. Yarrick Utilities proposal. Our loan application with the State Department of Health to purchase the Allen Carey Community Water System has been approved. I spoke with Jeff last week, and while there are some hoops we have to jump through and still need to, we need, we still need to negotiate the final sale price and terms. But due to the COVID-19 situation, nothing much is really happening. However, we did get an asset lit from the Department of Health, and just Jeff needs to fill it out. I forwarded it on to him and asked him to return it so I can send it in. Water system issues. As you're aware, we're, we're notified by the Department of Ecology that unknown to us, construction of a new well should have been completed by March 1st. Requested a three-year extension on the deadline and Ecology has expressed a willingness to grant that if we can address and satisfy the concerns of the Squaxin tribe in relation to impacts on Sherwood Creek. Commissioner Jackson, myself, and Bill Ray had a conference call with the biologist from the Squaxin tribe. She asked us a bunch of questions and did say the tribe doesn't want this process to be adversarial. They're willing to work with us any way they can to be helpful. I previously contacted Doug Peel of Northwest Water and asked how to proceed with the new well issue. And he responded that we should contact the hydrologist that originally worked on the water right, Robinson Noble, and get them involved. I reached out to them and received a response basically saying, we'll be glad to help. Open your checkbook. The consultant 
that dealt with the tribe's concerns is different from Robin, Robinson Noble. I reached out to them, but have not received a response, most likely due to the COVID-19 situation, but I'm fine. At this point, we continue to explore our options moving forward. I reached out to Kathleen Barantes, but she told me there's no grant money available for drilling new wells. Suggests that we look in the Public Works Trust Fund. She also said there's a possibility that money is available for the acquisition of an adjacent system with an approved well. One possibility is to expand the Aaron Allen, Allen Carey water system well, but get someone to, to look into this uh, has been stalled, but getting someone to look into this has been installed by the COVID-19 situation, coupled with the governor shut down of construction. So basically in a holding pattern for now, on just about all the issues surrounding this. Security issues, as you know, we've been discussing installing high resolution remote cameras at the park as well as at the Hood Canal Boat Launch and Marina. We want a system that'll transmit multiple images from multiple cameras in multiple locations and store them in the cloud for any necessary law enforcement documentation. Commissioner Jackson and myself met with a potential vendor in January and received a bid last month. It was way out of our ballpark, which we expected, but she did offer suggestions for us to follow up on. There's nothing new has happened on that. WPPA meeting schedules, the finance seminar originally scheduled for June 10th to 12th at the Campbell's Resort in Chelan has been canceled. The next step is the executive director seminar, July 9 and 10 at Alderbrook, and the commissioner seminar is July 21 and 22 in Walla Walla at the Marcus Whitman Hotel. Running out our small office, nothing new. Totem pole issue. James Kelsey and I finally connected and agreed to try and meet, but got sidetracked by the virus. I'll try contacting him again this week. So, old business, would you like me to go into that? Yes, please. Oyster House. We had previously received a $1,600 bid from Envirotech, which I originally thought was a bit high, but after getting one from Crazen, it's actually pretty good. Bill Ray and myself met on site with the owner of Envirotech and the engineer from Art Anderson, along with Commissioner Jackson last week to review what needs to be done and create a plan of action. The engineers asked about a survey of the site and if there were any previous test boring. I reached out to Bonnie Knight since, it was, since if there are, they predate me. What I found out is the old launch ramp was constructed in 1983 and the well in 1988. She wasn't sure, but thought there were drawings for both. However, we looked and didn't find any. So all that stuff may have been sent down to the state archives when we sent that massive material down here about three years ago. If so, we'll need to send a request for it, but have no idea how long it may take. Test borings are included in the Envirotech bid and we need to get a survey done. The grant will cover the cost of both. Once the design work is finished and the geotech report is done, we can proceed with the Army Corps of Engineers permit. Once we have that, we can begin the demolition, although because of the fish window, we have to wait until July. Aside from getting these things ready to roll, we're we'll in a holding pattern until we get the work done in the Army Corps permit. Sweetwater Park, we're ready to close on this. The cost for the title commitment was included in the vouchers you approved. Once we forward the check, all we need are the final signatures and it's ours. We should be looking at security options for this to keep people out. I'll bring some options and costs back to you next month. Staging area development, nothing new to report on this. It did turn in about $6,200 worth of reimbursements, but since only 75% will be reimbursed, we'll see a little over 4,800. However, as noted above, the entire prison system at RCO went down along with the backup server that we resubmitted on Thursday. I've also begun looking for consultants to determine the amount of mitigation we need to do for things like hazardous materials, but like everything else, because of COVID-19, this is a full motion. All sorts meeting, the July, April 27th, Kitsap All Sorts meeting was canceled, and the next one will be scheduled it is still somewhat up in the air. Any of you are welcome to attend as commissioners are usually there as well. Transient mortgage expansion project, other than the electrical issue I reported on early, this project is essentially complete. Be submitting some additional reimbursements and had previously submitted a scope of work amendment 
to our grant manager at Commerce to deal with the fire issue. And and that was approved. But since we're not going to move forward with the that for the time being, I'm going to keep the grant open until a final decision has been made on how we're going to proceed, if at all. Criminalization of marina rules. Once we get the cameras in place, we can move forward. Until then, we're in a holding pattern. That's my report. Thank you very much, Larry. So old business has been taken care of. Uh, new business items, discussion of possibility of reopening for facilities. And Mr. O'Keefe, I see you uh, on the screen. Is there anything you'd like to say before we move on to the uh, new business items? Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to see you, Ted. The other yes. <clears throat> We're trying thanks, to win. Thanks for being here. I'm sorry, what was that? Thanks for being here. Oh, it's good to be here. I mean, seriously, it's good to see you. It's uh, it's a great opportunity. I mean, one of the weird things about this is you find out um, some things that weren't possible before are possible now. And one of them is we get to see each other over the internet in a way we never thought of in the past. So um, that's good. And it's good to be here. We are uh, watching or sitting in on uh, commission meetings all over the state. And it's a great way for us to hear. And so we, when we talk to each other, we sort of share themes. And that's how we've been putting the agendas together for our Tuesday meetings is based on what we've picked up from um, folks, you know, who are trying to figure out, well, what are we going to do with our public meetings or what's happening with marinas? So it's been good. It's good to be here. And um, I hope if there's stuff that we can do that you'll let us snow because that's our job. I'm sorry about the meetings being canceled. I know it's hard on us not to do that. So I'm sorry that we've had to do it. It's I know to... I speak for the other commissioners or we appreciate you being there, being here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, discussion of possibility of reopening poor facilities. Um, as ED, do we need to do a three uh, phase plan, Larry? Well, yeah, I think we do because I don't see any problem with opening the launch ramps and the marinas. And I know that some of the other ports are opening their marinas and launch ramps. Um, and the state is loosening up the rules about the state parks. I think they just start to open this week. So I don't see any real problem with that. We had um, had left them open anyway, but weren't charging for them. I think we should start charging again. Um, so uh, the gazebo, that's another story. Um, I'm not real sure how we ought to proceed because most of the bookings that we have are for weddings. You know, we have the Memorial Day thing, and I don't know if that's going to happen or it isn't. You know, the big event with all the veterans every year. Um, has, I haven't heard anything, and I kind of think maybe I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen here. Um, but, you know, that's we're, we're going to do a, a budget adjustment here in June and, or July, and I think we can pretty much kiss off all the gazebo revenue that we had put in the budget. Same thing with most of the launch room stuff. Although I'm getting calls every day from people that want to launch and I've issued a couple of um, annual passes. And I had two calls about annual passes. So I don't know. Um, but how about, I, I how about if we were to just do uh, mirror and Scott and Judy, you could chime in. How about if we were to mirror the, what the uh, what the state is doing, the governor, uh, um, the governor's three phases, uh, and opening up and just mirror that? Uh, I don't think we have any way to clean our stations after anybody or anybody's gone through there, and I don't think we want to do that. Um, I prefer that if I were to punch in my number, punch in my credit card to go launch my boat, I, I'd clean before or after. But uh, I don't need it. I don't think we need to uh, provide supplies out there. 
maybe I'm, I'm just being a little small about this, but um, we're not going to have a shrimp season. So I, I heard that from the fish and wildlife guys uh, this week. Uh, so we're going to lose revenue there. But I do think we need to open up our pay stations to start collecting money. I would agree with that. Sooner the better. As soon I as agree. we're allowed. We should probably have some signage out there to let people know that the charges are back on and maybe get Travis out there a couple of busy weekends to because you know how hard we work to get the mindset that North Shore launch was free. Now we made it free. We, we might have to rework that again because people are going to say, oh, I thought it was free, just like they did for 10 years before. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Scott. Yep, I agree. Well, we could buy a box of rubber gloves for each place, too, for those things. I mean, they don't cost that much. Uh, I, I'm concerned, Larry. I, I was helping out the... North, East, North Mason Food Bank this afternoon, and um, they're, they're going to just disappear. Um, I would just put a sign up there saying, hey, wipe it down, um, whether it's by uh, diaper wipes or whatever, just wipe down the screen before you type in your information. So, Okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. I mean, that's, that's my opinion. So. Larry, I have a, a boat North Shore boat launch question that came from your director's report. Do you think if we put some lights on the opposite side of the street that it's going to bother the neighbors? No, because there's no neighbors that it's going to shine on. You know, we got that hillside on the left side as you're facing the, the back of it. And on the right side, uh, we have that one neighbor, but they're set back behind the bank as well. So I don't think we're going to bother anything. What I'm concerned okay. with is, you know, we got drug drug deals going on in the back. Yeah. And yeah, we need it lit, for sure. That doesn't that doesn't happen, Larry. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and the neighbor that's complaining is the one right next door. And did you say he's going to build a house there? Yeah, but it's shining away from him. But it's it's the one with the motorhome and the boat and the wrought iron and okay, he yeah. picked the fence on our side. Yeah. That one. That guy, yeah. Because I was thinking we should still look at trying to get that property, but if he builds a house on it, that's gonna be yeah, we're done. Yeah, we can. Yep. Is that on the right side of the uh uh as you're looking at the water, it's the one on the right. Yeah, Earl is on the left. Okay. Yeah. And there's somebody talking about building up on that side there. On the right side of the boat ramp. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're talking about. He's going to have the house fairly close to the water. Okay. And, you know, there's some setbacks and he's, you know, he's going to have to observe those. But I don't know how far back he's planning on. But he, I think he's, when we were talking the other day, he said something about, about having it be it like at about the end of the fence line. Hmm. So okay. He wasn't real clear about exactly what he was doing there. I have another Is comment already... about. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry, Judy. It's all right, go ahead. I have another comment about reopening our facilities. Um, the office building, if we could do some sort of a phased approach, getting into that, maybe a couple of days a week, Larry comes in, the other two days comes in, I'm talking about getting Don back to work. Don never has stopped working. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, he works by himself, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, being outside is probably and what I had him doing is I told him, if you have any like long-term projects, this would be a good time to do them. So yeah. he's, he's been working on a couple of different things as time went on. The only yeah, great. thing I have a concern about there is reopening the bathrooms. Right. I think maybe for the time being, we just want to leave those porta potties there. Sounds good. Yeah, I would agree with that. We changed uh, porta potty vendors also. We were using this company in Shelton, 
and they were billing us every 28 days. And when we called them and said, how much is it a month? They gave us a number. But what they didn't tell us was it was every 28 days, not monthly. So that's 13 times a year. So we've got somebody else in there, uh, AAA septic or something. And who was uh, there before? Island Johnny. Okay, isn't that who we've always used, like North Shore and? I don't know who they use. Well, I think well, we the used North to use AAA. We Pardon? used AAA. We used to use AAA many years ago. Well, they only bill monthly, and in the end, we're going to save about five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. So good. Larry. Go ahead, Judy. Nope, that's good. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying, I think that's who we use for the Santa cans on the North Shore, too. They might be billing us every 28 days down there as well. Yeah, that's their policy. And when I found out about that, it was like, wait a minute here. And uh, I so, called them up, and Lady was actually kind of rude about it. So. <laughs> Do we want to switch our vendor at the North Shore as well? We did. That's it. Okay. Oh, it's all switched. Well, I, we're going to leave the porta potties. Those are Island Johnny ones. We're going to leave those right now. I don't know that uh, AAA has porta potties you can rent. Oh, I got you. Okay. We we'll just leave those there because they're not going to be there that much longer. I got. You. And but we for the stuff on the North Shore, uh, you know, we're going to have them do the service. Great. And like I said, save us about five hundred dollars a year overall. I'm sure Jerry's enjoying this porta potty discussion. It's very riveting. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been to a legislative session? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to say thanks, you know. <laughs> okay, our next discussion item is uh, removal of the uh, arc bins, possible discussion. This yeah, is, when I. I, I wouldn't yeah. say possible. I think we need to discuss it. So this came from me. Um, we're, we're doing the the clean out of our house and garage, and and as you guys know, I drive that Highway Three corridor quite often. So what I see is people uh, rather than going to the dump because they can't go to the dump, they're dumping next to the bins because most of the things aren't going to fit in the bin. Um, there's bicycles, microwaves. It's it's basically saving people a dump load and. Although I agree with the program, the ARC, and, and I support everything they do, I'm not sure that it's a, a good image for us to have dump loads in our front parking lot. It's really bad on the weekends, and um, even the bins themselves are pretty rusty, and they're pretty, uh, I'm sure they're contaminated with people touching them. And at the very least, I would recommend, I would like to see them gone, but if that's not consensus here, I would like to see them uh, maybe replaced because like I said, they're rusty and they're in bad shape and it's an eyesore to me. Well, I have a suggestion. Maybe what we should do is just have them remove them for now until all this is over and that'll eliminate, you know, getting junk piled up there. And once the dumps reopen again, then maybe have them come back. I talked to Chris Tibbs about it. He told me that um, they're having that problem everywhere. I'm sure. And um, I told him, you know, we can't have this. So he's been having somebody out there cleaning them up twice a week, but they're still a mess. I mean, I think- Yeah, the next day that they're not there, somebody's making a dump. Yeah. Um, yep. I think you put it on the head about it. it's become the new dump, so. I think if we have to take them out, when this is over, we could look at putting them back and see what happens. Yeah. Do you have any comment? Yeah, I think that's a good idea because when I drove by there too, I mean, there was a bunch of pile of stuff that, and I don't see this changing. So I would agree, have them remove it until after this is over and the dumps are open again. I, I would agree. Uh, I can't, uh, I agree with every one of you I think they need to be removed. And as somebody that collects stuff nowadays, people want to get rid of stuff. So I say we get rid of it. If uh, people want to do the right thing 
and just put the right amount of stuff in those boxes. We leave them, but let's get rid of them. So, uh, executive director, I guess that's uh, your call to get rid of those things I'll for a few months. And I'll take care of it. Yeah, today I drove by and there was garbage. It's no fault of anybody on this uh, screen, but it, there was garbage all over it. And I'm sure the neighbors don't want to see that. We don't want to see that. So, uh, yep. All right. No good deed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. O'Keefe, public comment. <coughs> like you're doing good work over there. I'm sorry to hear about the dumpster. Um, but, you know, I mean, that thing that you're talking about with the um, reopening your, your boat dock and your, um, you know, launch, you know, a lot of people are having the same conversation and they come to different places. It's really interesting. They don't want to have people go down to a walk go. I mean, they feel like they're a small community and that this get overwhelmed, but there's plenty of places, particularly in Puget Sound, that are getting ready to do what you're doing. Good. Good. There's one thing that I, I I know this board has thought about is trying to protect the traffic control off of uh, the drive up onto late uh, onto three. Unfortunately, I think uh, this week, the last two weeks, and uh, Commissioner Cooper can correct me. I think we've had three collisions in the last uh, two weeks on three in North Shore, um, but. Uh, I'm trying to back. I'm trying to figure out a way to make sure the county understands and the state understands that we need to back off traffic from the church uh, to Big Bubba's and keep that section open. So when people leave that drive, um, they have a clear sight up uh, up and down uh, State Route Three. So it might be as. Yeah easy as calling uh, wash dot and just seeing if there's some kind of parking signage or, or barriers that they could put there because you're right somebody stops they they want to cross the street which is dangerous all of its own to get a hamburger but then people pulling out of the port property can't see the oncoming traffic because there's a car there or multiple cars there well the other thing too is you know if you come up to the top of drum street and you look to the left to the south you can't see anything anyway until you're almost out in the road because of the, you know what's going on at the church. Yeah, that that that's what I was saying too. If you go down uh, State Route 302, you'll see from mile post 1.5 to mile post three, no parking on the right hand side. Signs. It just took a little bit of effort to get that stuff done. And that was all done because of the uh, shellfish access there. But it, it didn't take much. I just had to go through the tribe and we can do it. it. It'd be pretty easy to back traffic off. So people that come up Drum Street, come out of Drum Street, have a little bit of visibility there. So We can contact the church um, or Larry, you can, or I could talk to the church too, because it could be an, an unloading zone only because they do own, you know, part of it. It's not just Highway 3. Wash, uh, WashDOT could stop traffic, I mean, stop parking along a certain point, but then um, the church would have to step in and say loading and unloading only. And then the, the lot next door to them, that as well, whoever owns that. I'm not sure who owns that, but there's people that are there. Uh, short-term parking but as we all know when it comes down to heavy traffic it's uh people park up and down that road so we could mm -hmm. we can do that judy with just short-term parking no it's no more than 15 minutes uh yeah but then of course what you got to do is try to enforce that so but uh well, I, you know, could I we call that uh dave smith at the county anyway about the reduction of the speed limit uh, on North Shore by the boat launch. And I talked to him about this at the same time. Okay. Yeah, but that's a state highway. He doesn't, you know, he wouldn't be responsible for state. The county road on North Shore is owned by that county, mm -hmm. but it'd be washed on. Well, uh, it, it, if you don't, if you don't know, every state trooper has a project they have to do 
as a young state trooper. And if I were to get one of the young state troopers, which I get the sergeant or the lieutenant, to just adopt this as a program, all I have to sure. do is pull them out of Drum Street, take a look left and right. They understand it's a problem. They'll adopt it as their program, and they get a little bit of brownie points for that. So Perfect. we can do it. Yeah. It's a great idea, Ted. Yeah. And maybe we could offer the church extra parking if we need to once things kind of get sorted out with the oyster house. But maybe we could offer, you know, overflow or something like that. Because, you know, Absolutely. people, when they have weddings, they got to have a place to park. So yep. I, we can do it at the port. Um, as long as people get, uh, as long as they get adequate distance site out of Drum Street, uh, I think yeah. we can do that. No problem. So. Who owns the church? It's an organization. It's the historic um, organization, the Allen Historic Church. I can't remember the official title, but it's a it's a uh, a group, and it's a five hundred one c three. And they have no they parking. Own, they no, have, not really. Except on it's the our, side and up front. Yeah. yeah, it's our lot or nothing for events there. Pretty much. Maybe they transfer that to us. <laughs> I don't know. Are you sure you want it? <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It is. Look good in our portfolio. That's true. So the last thing I, I had asked uh, Larry about this earlier this week, has anybody heard anything about Allen Days? No, I haven't. Okay. Tahuya Days canceled. Uh, the okay. Tahuya Salmon Bakes canceled. And that helps. It's just a lot of planning goes into these events. And, yeah. you know, the Paul's Bow canceled, Viking Fest, which is this month. I, I know they're going to, I just can feel it. They're going to cancel 3rd of July if this goes into June. And it, it has to do with planning. You spend a lot of time right. planning this, getting vendors and lining things up and then the governor says another 30 days it's just it's too much it's just a yeah. good year to cancel a lot of things although it affects us financially the fundraising part of it yep yeah the big silverdale duck race was canceled i'm yeah. sorry larry it looks like your ducks are coming into your palm trees over there <laughs> <laughs> uh I think we're going to be canceling a lot. I think Lakeland Village Bigs Golf Tournament is going to be canceled. Um, and it's, I just don't think there's a lot of things going on. And the biggest thing I, I agree with you, Scott, nobody wants to ask people for money. Uh, nobody wants to ask our businesses. And uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of sponsorship. So, and I don't, I wouldn't want to ask any sponsorship, so. Yeah. Yep. I have one, one thing for good to the order when you're there, Ted. Yes, sir. So it's just a, uh, it's a comment that Larry made in his, his executive report about all the tax money comes from Lakeland. So we, we've been down this road before and I'd asked the question and I had actually called the assessor's office and they said that they can't, they can't really get that information for us, but it, it would be interesting to me to find out precinct wise um, where the money does come from. Uh, there's two Belfair commissioners, there's one Allen commissioner and does the money really, all of our money come from Lakeland. That's just a question that I've, I've brought up before because it's been said before that all of the port's money comes from Lakeland. I'd like to know if that's true or not. Yeah, me, good point if, because Belfer's to, got a lot of a lot of commercial property. Sorry, Scott. Yeah, yeah no, I, if, I, I'll take a look, uh, Scott. I mean, that's a great question. I don't know. I know Lakeland has just decided not to pay any property taxes, so. <laughs> yeah because they can <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah no, that's a joke that was a joke to, no, i know but um, two-thirds of the district in welfare 
or two thirds of the port districts in Belfair? I don't think personally, I don't think all the money comes from Lakeland. I mean, we have Victor, we have North Shore. Uh, we have a lot of money coming from a lot of places besides Lakeland Village. But I, I will look. I'll ask. Um, maybe we'll ask the treasurer, Larry. Well, I was going to say, I don't think it all comes from Lakeland. And, you know, I didn't mean to give you that impression. Not, not literally but, all. But, yeah, but. Lakeland has, what, 400 houses or something up there? Oh, you know? no. No. 800. No. 800? We have we have about uh, fourteen hundred houses. Okay, and they're all much higher valued houses than other parts of the district, and that's what I meant by that. Yeah, they're... the only thing that has comparable value is what we have down the north and south shore, but we don't go that far down there. And then we've got Lake uh, Beers Cove and Lynch Cove has a lot of houses, but the values don't compare to Lakeland. No, that's that's points well taken i'm just maybe six years ago that same claim was made and i just asked the director at the time if he could find out kind of does the money come in from commissioner districts and the assessor basically threw us out of the office but you know or, or the treasurer <laughs> for I will, after, check. Like, really. I will check uh for you and judy I and mean, judy probably knows better than i do but I don't think Lakeland is growing. Uh, there's yeah, a bunch of development going on right now. So, but at the same time, I think property wise value, most people want to have water view or on the water. And Victor, North Shore, and 106 has a lot of value in those places. So, um, even though Lakeland is growing, uh, and it's still growing. I don't think, a, I, I probably would say as a rough estimate, and I'll, I'll get the correct number, it's probably 65% of the North, uh, and I wouldn't even say that, probably 55% of uh, the North End, uh, I'll back up, 50% uh, <laughs> of the North End comes from Lakeland. So, uh, but Lakeland, Lakeland has a lot of retired folks with set incomes and so and, and it's still growing uh even up here so uh, anyways uh, I would like to do something else of uh something I was thinking about is maybe we could have another uh commissioner's retreat when everything is settled done uh, we could all wear masks and uh but I think we could do some, we, we have some other business that needs to be taken care of with regards to uh, Sweetwater Park and some other stuff. It'd be nice if we sat down and talk, we could advertise it. We could do it here in, in, uh, at the port. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we can do it here at the port, but, and so the public can be there, but it'd be nice to, have a commissioner's so-called retreat and and just do it locally, save some money and uh, invite folks there, but have some public input. I know Sweetwater Park seems to still be uh, an issue. And thank you, Larry, for all your work you've been doing. I We really appreciate it, so. Yeah, thank you. That's such a yeah, I would like a retreat. Yeah, we get Big Bubba's or something. There you go. Yeah. Hey, what happened today at uh, the North Shore, Scott? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, a motion to adjourn? <laughs> so moved. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> all, second, I'm at. <laughs> uh, all approved? Aye. Uh, aye. aye.